I'm with Albina Cardinal, who is a community elder as well as a residential school survivor. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. So, can you please describe um, your experience going into the school and just maybe touch on what the purpose of your visit was to that school? I was invited by uh, one of the teachers to go in to visit uh, groups of children from grades one to three, and I I enjoyed going there and to share some of my experiences with residential school, which came up as the children were asking questions about it, and and uh, it was I think it was uh, interesting to see so many little uh, inquisitive kids asking about residential school and why I was there and what how old I was when I started and all this it was it was quite a experience so what age group were uh, these students they're great ones uh, they're probably a great uh, age uh, six to maybe eight seven eight years old and uh, were there teachers? Uh, was there was there also professional development things as well for teachers? At another well, the, time? the teachers accompanied the little students when they came in. But then, we I also we were I was also invited to a, a development uh, program with uh, teachers and uh, educators that are, are trying to implement this. Uh, Indigenous education into the school system. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so, do you think that uh, you know this specific uh, reason for you being there was? Do you think it was say it was part of a healing journey, or was it to pass on certain uh, stories or or um, school skills? Like, what do you think the objective was? <laughs> Well, I think it was part of a healing program that uh, that has to do with uh, with uh, being a, a residential school supervisor, and also to pass on information to the children about the going on in the residential school and what we what I got out of it, and I think it's beneficial for them to know uh, as this uh, program is being. Uh, looked at into going to the school schools about our indigenous history when you were in this when you went to the school um, how was it laid out for you as far as um, like uh, do you remember the setup and um, we were well we were assigned a certain room in the school where the kids came by groups uh, I think two grades to a group, and we took a, I took in at least uh, three groups, uh, and talked about uh, residential school and how how old I was. I went in there, and the kids had all kinds of questions. So the time went by fast that they were asking so many questions that it was interesting for them to be asking these questions, and uh, and I think they it was. They really enjoyed it as far as I, I, they said at the end of programs that they were happy to see me there. And mm -hmm. So you would say that it's, uh, it was sort of uh, meeting maybe some of the program objectives like for the curriculum and, and do you think it had an impact? I think so. I, th I think so. I, I think the kids have to uh, sort of get it from uh, uh, first hand from some of, some of the school survivors. And, so then they can put it into the school programs and I think it's easier to listen to a, a person uh, instead of trying to read out of books and what's written in the books and stuff like that. If there was some form of evaluating, um, what kind of feedback had, did you receive? I've had some good feedback. Uh, teachers have uh, complimented me on uh, things that the kids uh, learned uh, on first-hand basis and I think it's a good thing for for schools to do that. From your perspective then, what do you think is Indigenous education? Like if you were to focus on a, 
a specific area that maybe you you uh, you talked about in your uh, discussion with the students. What uh, what do you think is a good focus? Like, um, do you think it's history? Do you think it's language? I think it's both. I think it's good to, for them to learn the history and also to uh, try and get the language back into into the programs. <coughs> Because when we went to school, we had to learn French, um, and I think you know the native language should have been included at that time, but it wasn't. So I think it's a good thing now that people are starting to realize that, yeah, the the native language should should be taught in schools. If you were, um, you know, as an elder, and. Uh, and if you were involved in passing on knowledge from one generation to another, I guess from your perspective then, what knowledge is important that you would like on like to pass on to the next generation? Like, do you think there's one thing that's specifically important? Like, you did mention language, so is that is that what you stand by, um, or or the history? real history of... Um... The, I think the real history of the indigenous people uh, sh should be looked at more thoroughly mm -hmm. because I think that's important uh, because in the history as far as I can see when I was going to school it was mostly history from the people that immigrated into, into the country. We studied their history and how they survived and, and why why the indigenous people weren't included is, is, is wasn't right. It should they should have been looked at and included in uh, in the schools, mm -hmm. and so people can learn how they were, how they lived, and how they lived their culture, and and how they raised their family, and how they survived. So then, if you had a story or a teaching, or even like something that you want to share. Uh, maybe when when you were before you went into the residential school, for example, like maybe something you did with your parents or um, something in your family was. Is there things that you remember that you would like to share that were important as part of teachings and? Um, I remember when I was younger, before I started school, we lived. We moved to the trap line in the fall, and that's where we lived for the winter. My dad was trapping, and then my mom used to hunt for squirrels as well. And I, and then we passed our time doing different things, like we had a hill where we used to slide, and then my dad had dogs, and we had a dog team. And and when we were moving in the fall, he used those same dogs and put backpacks on them, so they packed our our belongings and our tent or teepee, whatever we had, and, and we camped on the way. And, and I think that experience, I, I still remember, and I really enjoyed it. And another thing was when we were growing up, the two months out of a year, uh, July and August, when we were home, we, uh, we were taught how to go for wood, look for wood, and uh, chop it up and haul it to the camp and haul water and do different things like washing on a washboard like because there was no running water and then we I kind of watched my mom when she made moose hides and then she in the end she was making moccasins and uh, those were good times I I didn't learn how to make moccasins or anything but I really enjoyed watching my mom doing that and which was a good experience I think uh, that's one part of our lives that we missed out. So the moccasins, um, have you, uh, did you ever get to have some for yourself? Like she made them for you guys? Or? She made uh, she made each a pair of moccasins for all of us that were coming to residential school so we can use them in the winter at the mission. If you were to share some of this stuff, would you share those stories with your grandchildren, your great-grandchildren, or would you be more inclined to just share uh, your experiences if uh, only if asked? I think if they wanted to know, I think if my children or my grandchildren wanted to know that, you know, they could present the questions to me and I could answer them the best way I can. So then my last question is, what is your vision for Indigenous education 
over the next two year, uh, ten years, you know, like, what do you think you you think could be achieved, or uh, what do you hope is uh, it changes over the next ten years? I think we're uh, the educators are on the right step, uh, trying to include uh, Indigenous education into their education systems in all the divisions in, in the, across Canada. Mm -hmm. um, Hopefully, uh, they keep working hard at it. Uh, I'm sure it's going to take off. In 10 years, it's it's possible that they will have made uh, progress, but I think it's going to take time because uh, we've been here for so long, the first people of the country, and, I, and nobody knew anything about their history all throughout the school year, so I think it'll be... Ten years is a short time, but I'm sure there'll be a lot of progress. Mm -hmm.